First, congratulations to all the graduates and to your parents, friends, and family who are celebrating with you today and who will cheer you on to your next steps, which are coming fast, and I mean really fast, like we need you now. Just kidding, but really. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited to support you on this day. My name is Ashley Selke. I am a CBT and I was once in your position, a graduate with the world in front of me, and it was so exciting. After receiving my veterinary technology degree, I have held many amazing positions in this profession. Zookeeper, small animal practice, mixed animal practice, specialty surgery, as well as serving on state and national boards and committees. I have learned and grown from each experience that I've had along the way, and I'm very honored to continue to serve the veterinary technician profession as the NAFTA president-elect. On behalf of NAFTA, congratulations to the class of 2021. We are most pleased to officially welcome all of you into the world that is veterinary technology, and for some nursing. This was a very trying year for all of us, adapting to navigate a life of learning, socially distanced, and also some feeling isolated at home while obtaining their education virtually. But you overcame all of those obstacles and you succeeded. You achieved your goal. And now, as you set off to take your VT&E and for some state exams, know that we support you all the way. Your path is completely open now to go in any direction you want in the veterinary field. Clinical practice, specialty, ER, wildlife rehabilitation, government, laboratory, zoo medicine, academia, and so much more. So advice from one veterinary technician to another, be a lifelong learner and never stop obtaining knowledge. Our field is changing all the time. So go to those continued education lectures, soak in all that you can and pass your knowledge along. Also, never be afraid to ask questions. I have found that so many people in this field are afraid to ask questions. Don't be. None of us know everything, so ask away. And maybe we both take away something from that conversation. And lastly, be kind. Kind to your peers, coworkers, those you learn from and who learn from you, and so on. Kindness goes a long way in this profession. So again, congratulations, class of 2021. You earned it, and we are so very proud of you. Thank you. Congratulations, veterinary technology and veterinary nursing student graduates, and welcome to the most wonderful profession that there is. Our profession really is growing and changing, evolving, advancing much faster than many others. Um, and you can be part of that. I've been around a really long time. And when I started at a very small general practice, um, the hospitalized patients didn't even have IV catheters. We were hand dipping x-rays in dark rooms. Um, most of the time, the veterinarian drew blood and induced anesthesia and intubated patients. Luckily, we have come a long way since then. Um, today, veterinary technicians do all of those types of medical procedures and so many more and more advanced procedures. We also do so many other things outside of the clinic. We write books and articles. Um, we manage veterinary hospitals. We work in research, um, in industry. We speak at national conferences. Um, really today, our opportunities are endless if we really look for ways that we can advance ourselves and our profession. Now remember, we're all part of a very important piece of the veterinary healthcare team. You need to be an advocate for your patients. You're their voice. You need to be an advocate for your clients. Help them to understand they don't have the medical knowledge that you do. So educate them, console them, be part of that team that is making their experience the very best that it can be. Advocate for your colleagues, your fellow technicians, assistants, front desk staff who oftentimes have the hardest job in the hospital um, dealing with um, some of our clients at the front desk or can sometimes be very worried. And advocate for veterinarians. 
Um, there's a lot of veterinarian bashing that goes on as well. Um, and that's part of the problem that we have today with burnout, compassion fatigue, and all of those kinds of things is not only with veterinarians and technicians, but with some of our other support staff as well. So advocate for everyone on that veterinary healthcare team. Advocate for your profession. We have a long way to go, even though we have come a very long way. Now think back, uh, the history of our profession really closely resembles that of our counterparts in human medicine. Um, someone was needed to support doctors, then they were just trained on the job and almost a type of apprenticeship. Eventually educational programs uh, developed and that was became a requirement in the human field to gain an education in your chosen field of medicine to um, pass a national and, and or state exam and become legally credentialed within your jurisdiction. And that was not only for doctors and for nurses, but various members of um, the human healthcare team. In veterinary medicine, that isn't quite the case yet. Um, sure, for our veterinarians, it is, um, but for Technicians, credentialing varies so much from state to state. And there's so much confusion um, about what that means and our role, um, our education, our more advanced training, what skills and knowledge we have. There's so much uh, confusion of us and our role within the general public and even within our own profession. Advocate for your profession and help change and educate everyone. Think about the VNI, the Veterinary Nurse Initiative. NAFTA has put this initiative forward to try and establish a national credential, the registered veterinary nurse. The purpose behind this is to help lessen confusion and help better delineate our role, um, our skills, our education, and our training from others on the veterinary healthcare team. We really believe that a single unified um, credential um, will help make a difference. Also, in all states, we need a defined scope of practice. What is it that a credentialed veterinary technician or veterinary nurse um, can legally do? And what things um, should someone who does not have that education and credential, what things can they do in the veterinary hospital? Very important piece. Um, we also are looking to have title protection across the country. In some states, there is no credentialing whatsoever. In other states, there's credentialing, but there's no title protection. And title protection really means that you can't call someone a veterinary technician or perhaps a licensed veterinary technician or a registered veterinary technician without them having that actual credential. That doesn't exist in all states. All of these things lead to technicians not always being utilized properly in the veterinary hospital and allowed to really practice at the top of our education and license. And so that's something that we really need to work together to change. We also need to try and change and increase public awareness of our whole profession of veterinary medicine in general, but also more importantly, for me at least, is uh, the veterinary technician profession. So now that you've graduated, take the VTNE. You'd be surprised how many graduates I find don't do that. Such an important step. You've come this far. Continue with taking the VTNE, applying for a credentialing in your state to whatever credentialing body that is and whatever credential you would have, and then get involved. Get involved in your state association, get involved in NAFTA, your national association. This is how we're going to change things and make a difference. As I said at the beginning, our profession is growing, changing, and evolving. Really embrace that change. Help advance our profession. Embrace the future. Be instrumental in making positive change. As we all work together to advance veterinary technology, and veterinary nursing, we can do amazing things. So congratulations again, and I look forward to seeing the change that you make in our profession. Congratulations, class of 2021 graduates of the Veterinary Technology and Veterinary Nursing programs. 
Um, when I get asked about the, how I became a veterinary technician or how I came to be who I am today, um, I often start out by saying, you know, I actually didn't mean to be a veterinary technician. And I know that sounds a little weird, uh, but let me explain um, that uh, when I was in high school, uh, time for college applications were uh, coming by and I knew I needed to uh, think about where I needed to go. I didn't really have an idea. Uh, being um, somebody from my culture, uh, definitely being a human doctor, uh, MD, was something that is very prestigious and well-respected, something that I thought about. But I didn't think that I wanted to go that direction. I thought, what about veterinary medicine? So I went to UC Davis undergrad, graduated with an animal science degree, got into vet school, and after a little while, um, I dropped out. It just quite didn't feel the right uh, thing to be doing, um, but I really enjoy the hands-on care with the animals. And so I worked as a veterinary assistant um, at a place called Adobe Animal Hospital for a while, uh, a while, 18 years, next 18 years of my life. Um, but um, uh, I uh, met uh, somebody named Nancy Shaffron, who is a great friend of mine now and uh, is a, um, a mentor of mine as well. That I could hear uh, Dr. Roos, the owner of the hospital, uh, showing her around when she came to visit to do a CE session and uh, I could hear them coming down the hallway uh, I was in the lunchroom and as he enters the room. He says, oh, there's Ken uh, This is a guy that dropped out of vet school and now he works uh, as an assistant and um, <laughs> I thought to myself man, what an introduction. Thanks for introducing me in that kind of way and um, Nancy uh, kind of just looked at me and said so do you like it? And my answer was, yes, you know what, I do. And that moment of embarrassment actually turned into a realization moment of saying, yeah, you know what, I do like what I do. And that's where my switch got flipped. What am I able to do as an assistant? And actually, Nancy then quickly said right after that, then get yourself credentialed. And there's also something called VTS certification that you can get. And really kind of nudged me to go in the right direction. And now I realize um, when she asked me, do you like what you do? She was really asking me, does this matter to you? And my answer was yes. And so since then, I've gotten involved in many different things. Um, I remember sitting across the table from uh, Vicki Ograin, who is one of the past presidents of NAFTA, and asking her, what can I do to help? This was at a conference. And that led to her coming back to me a little bit later saying, you know what? We need somebody on this particular committee. It was a state representative committee. And uh, we need some help uh, in strengthening the connection between um, veterinary technicians across the nation. Do you want to help with that? And I said, yes. I remember Nancy, while we were on the phone talking about different kinds of cases and what kind of training we wanted her to have, uh, her asking me, hey, you know what? Do you want to present a case report at IVEX, which is an international um, emergency and critical care conference? And I thought to myself, you know what? I had no idea that was an option for me, um, but yes, I'll try it. And it was the, one of the most terrifying experiences ever imaginable <laughs> doing some public speaking without any experience on that. Um, but that's what led to me being a speaker, an educator, a person that goes around to conferences and does presentations. And I still do that today, so I don't regret that at all. I've also always asked what's next in my career to continue bettering myself to be able to do my job better. So that's how I got my, uh, led to me getting my VTS certification in emergency and critical care, small animal internal medicine. Then I thought, what's next? I uh, obtained a master's in veterinary science. And I try to continue to develop myself further and further. And the thing that I would like you to take away from all of that is when you come across these opportunities, take them. Ever since I said yes to these opportunities, my world has opened up beyond the four walls of the four walls of the practice and has gotten me connected with this international community of veterinary technicians and veterinary nurses who are very passionate for the same reasons that I am. And that sense of community is very important. Now, as you sit here today, 
I'll ask you the same question that Nancy asked me. Does this matter to you? Your degree, the profession that you're going into, does it matter? I'm sure the answer is yes, absolutely. And the next question that I'll ask is, why? What's the reason? You're probably thinking about different kinds of faces, animals that you cared for, experiences that you've had, or even visions and dreams of the future and what you're going to accomplish. Imprint that in your mind as you sit here today, making a commitment to be in the profession of veterinary nursing. This profession very much matters to me. You matter to me as the future of veterinary nursing. And so when people ask me how I became to be a veterinary technician, I do start out by saying I didn't mean to be a veterinary technician, but now I proudly and clearly say I choose to be a veterinary technician. As I think about uh, the people who come and graduate uh, each year and uh, this time of the year comes around, I'm always, I'm always feeling proud about uh, being able to uh, welcome the new peers that uh, I'll be working alongside in order to continue uh, pushing veterinary nursing to further and further heights. And so uh, once again, congratulations on your next step and a huge milestone in your career. And I'm looking forward to seeing you, seeing you out there to walk alongside you in this field.